One of the most feared situations in aviation is the engine failure at 500 feet. We call it the impossible turn, but is it impossible? Let's find out. We're here on the ground in Anguilla in the Just Flight Warrior. Release the parking brake. Power's coming in. Takeoff power is set. We got the crosswind correction in. Airspeed's alive. <laughs> the crosswind control is a bit squirrely here, so we're going to climb out at, eight, at 78 knots, which is best angle. We want to get as much altitude below us as quickly as possible. At 630 feet, I'm going to kill the engine, and I'm going to hold the nose up for five seconds because you've got to simulate the fact that this is going to surprise you. And once that five seconds is up, I will try to get this airplane back on that runway. There's 600. There's 630. Engine fails. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4 1000, 5 1000. Look how much airspeed bleeds off. To get that nose down, you got to start turning. All right, we got the nose down. 73 knots is what we want. That's best glide. And we have got to turn, we have got to turn. 15 degrees is not gonna do it. And look at that. Start angling back. I'm not gonna stall it now. I might not get on the runway, but I'm gonna get on a surface, a good hard surface here. This works for me. You might take off a nose wheel, you might run over a sign and kill your prop and your engine. So be it. We survived. The reason I survived isn't because I practiced this a couple times beforehand. I didn't. The reason I survived is I had the information available and ready for me that I knew what the best way to approach this was when it happened. So let's talk about this real quick. First of all, it's always presented as a 180 degree turn to get back to the airport, and it's not 180 degrees. As you can see here, it's more like about 210 to 240 degrees. And you can see here, we made our initial climb, you reach your peak altitude, and you've got to turn hard to get back. And I had to really focus on making sure I turned hard to make that return. And the rule is any hard surface. I don't care if I land on the runway, if I land on a taxiway, if I land on a parking lot, all I want is a flat, relatively flat anyway, hard surface to land on. In this case, it was the median between the tarmac and the runway, and that works perfectly fine for me. And like I said, you can wipe out the nose wheel on a taxiway, you can run over a sign, stuff like that doesn't matter. As soon as that engine quits, the airplane belongs to your insurance company and your job is to get home to your family. Now let's try this the way most people do it. No planning at all. See, I knew what the winds aloft were, so I knew which way to turn. And it's easy to figure out. But it's a piece of information you should always have before any takeoff. What are the winds a thousand feet, two thousand feet above the runway? because that's where you're gonna be if the engine quits and you need to know. The reason you wanna turn into the wind, and see how the nose weather vanes off to the right? That's the direction the wind is coming from. That's the direction I wanna go if the engine quits. But what a lot of people do is they turn to the left automatically because that is the easiest way to see out the window from the pilot side of the aircraft. And so we're going to try this again, and we're going to turn to the left, and I'm going to make an honest attempt to make it. There's 600 feet. I think you're going to be surprised at how much more difficult it is when you turn downwind. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. All right, let's get the nose down, and let's get turning hard. Let's get turning hard. Best glide is 73. 
but that wind is now behind me it is not doing me any favors and I am turning hard I've got the airspeed correct and I've got no chance no chance at all no chance at all and that was an honest try to make it that time take another look at Volanta on the second attempt I actually got in a sharper turn faster I did a better job of getting into the turn but look how much more ground you cover when the wind is blowing you from behind see that blew us way further away from the airport and therefore it takes just a lot more distance to get back to the runway see how tight that turn was and that wasn't even as good of a turn this turn was better I got to I got to 60 degrees didn't stall it and I still didn't get back. This one I got back with room to spare. So that's the rule number one. You've got to know which way the wind is coming from because that makes all the difference in the world. Now by far the safest way to do this is the following. And this is what I do for every real world takeoff if I'm not familiar with the area. And sometimes even if I am familiar with the area and I just haven't flown there in a while, I'm going to look on a map. We're going to use the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 map here. And what I'm looking for is any place that looks like an open, flat area to land an airplane. Number one, so here's the runway. We're going to be, going to be departing in this direction. That looks like a decent area. That looks like a decent area. Um, offshore is always an option. It's always an option. It's not my favorite option. But if you have to, you can. A lot of ditchings, you actually make it. So realistically, what I'm looking at is, let me see here. What I would look for, I'm going to look for this pond. And I think if I can get to the left of this pond, where I want to go is right here. Nice gentle turn right over here and put it down in this right here. Or these areas off about 30 degrees. And really what you should do is you should look about 30 degrees either side of the nose of the airplane. So when you're taking off this direction, you want to look in kind of a cone that goes out like this. Now, of course, down here, you're looking in the drink, right? 30 degrees off this way. I think these two options are pretty darn good. This might not be such a bad option. This one, if I can get over the water here, this little lake, I think is going to be a very nice option. So what I'm going to do I'm going to plan. If I lose my engine at 500 feet, I'm going to look off to the left. I'm going to see if one of these two is available. That's going to be my first choice. If I can get over this lake, I think this looks like a little better in terms of runway, but it might not all be flat. So we're going to have to take a look and just make our best judgment. But at least I know ahead of time what my choices are. Big off power is coming in. Big off power is set. Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed's alive. Sixty-five. Let's go flying. Climb out at seventy-eight. Beautiful day here in Anguilla. I want to climb on runway heading. So runway 1-1, one, one, you want to climb on runway heading. Most people won't fly 78. They'll go 80 knots. And we're having ourselves a good day. We're having ourselves a good day. So far, a good day. And then all of a sudden, we have a bad day. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. You see, I got my nose down in the airplane because I'm trying to figure out what's... And I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to slip it. Slip it right in there. Plenty of speed, plenty of speed. Look at that. Drop it on down. And I'm not gonna try and be cute. No, that wasn't helpful. Oh shoot. Let's 
See, I mean, that wasn't great. That wasn't great. But I gave myself a chance, and that's survivable. And I'll show you the last thing here is the, the way that it, this is often done, which is not survivable. The most common way people do this is like the following. No planning, no forethought. As soon as the engine quits, they panic, and then we'll see what happens then. Takeoff power is coming in. Got our crosswind correction in. I need to adjust my rudder sensitivity. It's way too sensitive. Airspeed's alive. 65 knots. And off we go. Let's pitch for 80, which is what most people would do. Nice round numbers. It's 80 knots, and we'll climb out. You know, most, most pilots are just kind of imprecise, you know? Even if you're shooting for 80, you might climb at 85. Generally, people will fly faster as opposed to slower. It's flying faster, especially low down to the ground, makes you feel better. Enjoying the scenery. Do, 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 do. And, oh, oh, uh, fuel selector. Oh, uh, uh. Uh, oh shoot, oh shoot. Okay, now I'm gonna turn back. Now I'm gonna turn back. They, you know, you're looking around to see if there's some hope of that engine starting again. And you just, now you're looking, you're hoping, and you're overturning, no rudder coordination. And you're looking, you're looking, you're looking, and they don't even, usually don't even get this far. It's usually just a straight stall spin right into the ground. So, what is the take back? So what you want to do is have a plan. The more information you have before this happens, the better. You want to know which way the wind is coming from at, let's say, 500, 1,000, 1,500 feet above the runway. And you want to turn into the wind because that keeps you closer to the airport. It also gives you a little bit better performance in terms of your ability to stretch your glide. The other thing you want to make sure you do is have a plan for where am I going to put this airplane down if this does happen. And with the technology that we have available to us now, the maps, Google Maps, and whatever you want, there's no excuse for not knowing where the flat spots are out front of where you're taking off from. I've read accident reports of people in like Idaho and Nebraska and Kansas and they stall, spin, and crash what we just did here in that last uh, attempt where the land is completely flat and has nothing on it. And they still try to get back to the airport and crash. Now, I knew this was here. I knew these were here. I knew that was there. And I knew I wasn't going to make that because you just look at that water and you realize you're not going to make it over. But I had more than one option. I took one. And I was able to get the airplane on the ground. And as long as you get the airplane on the ground, you know, relatively under control, they always say, fly the airplane as far into the crash as possible. And we did that. Right when we hit the ground the second time, I had the yoke back trying to arrest that descent and, you know, make it as gentle a hit into the ground as I could. Was it ideal? No. But guess what? It's never going to be in a situation like that. So the impossible turn is possible. It's a lot of fun to try. I would be interested to hear how you do if you try it in your favorite GA airplane. Let me know in the comments section below. And if you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear it. Hope everybody's doing well, and we'll talk soon.